Labor Talks was John Verrozier, recorded at Chippewa Valley Community Television in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Good day and welcome to Labor Talks. We are honored to have as our guest today, Jerry Shea. Jerry is the president of Market and Johnson. Jerry, welcome to Labor Talks. We're now on television. Thank you, John. I'm glad oh, to be okay. here. Thanks for the invitation. And thank you. And I hope I didn't interrupt you. Not at all. <laughs> okay. Now, we do have some questions, which is pretty, pretty usual for us. And my first question for Jerry is, now, you are the president of Market & Johnson, correct? That's correct. And how long have you been president of Market & Johnson? I've been with Market & Johnson for 28 years. I've been the president for three years, and I've been uh, operations manager for, I, th I believe, around five or six years. Okay. And what services does um, Market & Johnson provide for our community? Well, we're a general contractor and uh, construction manager. Uh, we self-perform a lot of our own work, a lot of the uh, carpentry, uh, con uh, concrete, masonry, studs and drywall. So we have a large, a large workforce. Uh, we build within, primarily within about a 90 mile radius of our offices. Uh, about a, this year we'll be working in three states, mm -hmm. uh, Minnesota, Iowa, and uh, Wisconsin. Uh, we're very client based. Our clients take us to a lot of areas that they want us to work in. Uh, and uh, which work, works out extremely well. Um, last year, just to give you an example, we put in place about $235 million worth of construction. And we run about uh, 300 field employees, what we're running right now when we're in our peak, and about uh, uh, 50 office employees. And we've been in, Mar at, uh, in Eau Claire since 1948. So, Anything else you'd like to add? Well, uh, Jewel Market started building houses in, in the Putnam Heights and the East Side Hill uh, when he started out in 48, him and his partner. And our first uh, commercial project was uh, in a, a, an addition to the, to the school in um, Altoona. And mm -hmm. this year, we're building the new school in Altoona. So it's kind of neat how that comes back. So now, now, this is not one of the questions I've got listed here. Sure. But obviously. Uh, Mark and Johnson, you, you build homes and private businesses, is that? Primarily um, um, commercial. We don't build homes any, uh, any longer. Uh, we've ah. been uh, working schools, uh, courthouses, uh, sand plants currently. Uh, we have a, a, a office buildings, retail buildings, uh, quick trips. Right now we're building okay. a lot of quick trips. So we build a lot of, the, a lot of different buildings for a, a lot of different sectors. And let's see, Market & Johnson is a privately owned company. Yes, it is. We all know that. And obviously, Market & Johnson has been pretty successful. So, you have a union. How does having a union affect uh, the services you provide? Well, as I said before, we travel to anywhere from three to five states. And, we, and basically, with, with construction, you have to go where the work's at. We just mm -hmm. can't pick where we want to build a building. Our owners pick where they're they want to build a building and we go there and build it. Um, so so uh, as our workload uh, rises and falls, we need to rise and fall with our own workforce. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the union gives us that capability to be at 300 employees or down to 50 employees. Obviously we'd rather be at 300 employees, mm -hmm. but it gives us that uh, flexibility to expand and, and contract with our owner's needs also, it gives us the flexibility as we travel from home that we can take a few lead men with us and then pick up people out of that local and uh, work on it. And we can go there with the assurances that we're going to get qualified people. When we ask for carpenters, we're going to get qualified journeyman carpenters uh, or masons or cement finishers. These are union members. These are union members. And mm -hmm. it works out extremely well for us. now. I'm not saying that all of them are, are equal. Some are better, better workers. Some are, have more experience in what we're doing. We have to sort through a little bit sometimes, but I'll, overall, not all that often. And so when we say we can expect a qualified workforce, we get a qualified workforce. Mm -hmm. and it works out very well. Okay. Obviously, not all workers are on the same level. Correct. You know that some people actually think, and it might be true, that they can do a better job than I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I find that hard to believe, John. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Um, now, Act 10. Mm -hmm. 
Has that had any effect at all on Market and Johnson as far as relation with employees or services or anything like that? We weren't directly affected by, by Act 10. Uh, now, a lot of our clients, they, they, whether it be a school district or be state of um, Wisconsin, uh, some of the in counties, for instance, some of their employees were, were impacted through that. And we mm -hmm. saw some of the, of the impact of it. One of the things that I think was, is, is um, interesting about that, though, at the time that Act 10 came out, and there was a, a lot of the issues down in Madison, uh, we were going through our own contract um, talks with our with our trade unions. Obviously, it was a very uh, tough time for the construction industry. It had contracted quite a bit, um, and at the time when that was was going through, there was a lot of controversy, and we were a little concerned that that would bleed over to our own contract talks, mm -hmm. even though we weren't being affected by it. Uh, I can tell you that that wasn't the case. And uh, we were able to work between labor and management, work out a deal, uh, that three-year deals at, at that time. That worked out ex extremely well. Um, you know, so we came to the bargaining table. We worked out our differences. There really wasn't a lot of differences. We have more in common than we have um, differences. And you know, we saw them, we saw uh, labor was very cooperative. They knew that the industry was under stress. And both sides worked together and found a, a uh, solution. Some of them took freezes. Mm -hmm. Some of them took very, very low, low um, increases that were, would be below cost of living. And so we worked together to get through that. And I thought that was uh, remarkable because there was a lot of distraction. There was a lot of mm -hmm. disruption. And there was a lot of mistrust. But I could say that with the trade unions and, and management, we were able to work through all those things and came up with an agreement that worked out well for both sides. And, um, and since then, you know, and, but that's always the way we've been able to do mm -hmm. it. Uh, sometimes people have a negative connotation about, about unions. Um, and um, around here I can say that the partnership between labor and management works. You almost robbed me of my next question. I'm sorry, John, no, I didn't mean good. to do that. That's, that's good because at least because that tells me that you really, really, really know what you're talking about. But um, we have been called union thugs. Mm -hmm. And that makes me angry. It really does. And by union thugs, we're talking about people who do nothing but pound the table and shout and yell and make fools of themselves. Have you seen anything even close to that? Again, I think, you know, I don't know if it's in our, our bubble of... Midwestern Wisconsin here, um, Northwestern Wisconsin is probably a, a better way to describe it. But you know, I I see it as more of a partnership, and you know, in every partnership, you're going to have good days and bad days. Mm -hmm. I can say that I think we have more good days than bad. Most issues that we have are relatively minor, that can be worked out. Okay. And um, Market and Johnson, from Jewel Market through Dan Market and Don Carlson, we've always been very involved with it, even though we're, a, you know, we would consider ourselves a medium-sized contractor. Um, and a lot of this stuff has gone statewide, where a lot of the larger contractors in Madison, Milwaukee have more say than us, and we're fine with that. But we want to represent our interest up here. Sure. Because we're, because we are different than Madison and Milwaukee and so on and so forth. So we've always been involved, and through that involvement, we've been involved with the pensions and the, as, uh, as uh, trustees. Uh, health as, as, as trustees, starting with Jewel Market, all the way through those people. We're still involved with it now. So we're meeting with them constantly, working out all, uh, a, a series of uh, issues. And through that, you know, I can say it's a true partnership, and mm -hmm. we can work things through. Now, is there some days when I might do something that aggravates them or they do something that aggravates me? Certainly. But we can normally get that resolved with a phone call. Or a sit down. That's the way it ought to be. It's the way it, it, it should be, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, we don't get the big issues that, you know, that everyone gets. You know, I can't remember the last time that we had a work stoppage in terms mm -hmm. of a contract that could not be worked out. It's got to be, John, over 24, 25 years ago that we've had a work stoppage in the Eau Claire area that Market and Johnson's been involved with where it was a contract that could not be worked out. It was that long ago. 
So we've had labor peace, and that's a cooperative effort. It's a partnership. We work things out. Um, so I guess in that light, maybe we're in this little bubble here in, in northwestern Wisconsin, but it's working out for us. Well, I don't think you're in just a little bubble. Uh, obviously, we have 15 minutes left. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That went fast, by the way. <laughs> well, time flies yes, when you're having does. fun. But you know, I used to be on the county board. And that means I used to be on the Human Resources Committee. Mm -hmm. And I always looked at it this way. Just as you have to look after the interests of Mark and Johnson, I had to look after the interests of the, of the county. Okay. And sometimes the other side would hear things that weren't true. Sometimes I heard things that weren't true. Mm -hmm. And I could look um, my counterpart in the eye and say, Mike, this is a bunch of crap. He said, John, I'll take your word for it. And then Mike could say, John, I'm hearing this and I'm hearing that. Are these rumors? Yeah. So that's, you know. In other words, we got along pretty darn good. Right. I've talked with other people on the school boards and in private business, and they say the same thing. They know how to get along with the union members, and the union members know how to get along with them. So it's pretty common from what I... Yeah, it, and, and it certainly should be, because, you know, we're in this together. It's yeah. one thing that I, that I always like to tell, tell both sides of the discussion. We're in this together. Yeah. We have common interests. Let's see if we can't work towards those. So. So, having settled that, um, has the right to work uh, law have any effect on union negotiations or any of the contracts between Mark and Johnson and the unions? Not yet. Um, now, because our contracts run through May 31st of 2017, uh, everything is intact as it is. Now, when we get to 20, so June 1st of 2017, things are going to have to change, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, you know, so far, uh, Mark and Johnson and, and over 300 contractors signed on to the uh, contractor coalition who, who tried to fight against right to work. We, mm -hmm. were, we were not successful, but we were working hand in hand with our uh, labor counterparts. Um, this was a fight that we didn't ask for. Um, and it was a, it's a distraction at a time when we don't need the distraction. That's something that Governor Walker had made a comment about early in the process about being a, a uh, distraction, and it definitely has been that. Now, um, I've seen through our people that they're working very hard through it. Uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding that, that's out there right now, and we're trying to get that cleared up. Um, this next two years gives us the opportunity to work with, with labor to, to see what, what, what we can do to keep things going smoothly. Um, is, so. it, is it safe to say that you're not a big fan of right to work? I, I, again, uh, it's a challenge that we didn't ask for. There's, with every okay. law, there's challenges and in, 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 in opportunities. Uh, right now, mm -hmm. we're more concerned with the, with the challenges. Uh, you know, we don't see a lot of big opportunities for us. We're a union contract. We've been a union contract for a long time. We don't see that changing. Um, and. Uh, but we'd rather have our, our people focused on taking care of our clients. Okay. And that's, that's where is my major concern with this. If we're distracted by something else, we can't take care of our clients. And we have a very good history of taking care of our clients with our crews, with our team. Um, and so anything that, that detracts from that is a concern for us. Um, but in the meantime, it's here. We're going to deal with it. We're going to work through our partnerships with okay. it with our with our uh, labor um, leaders and work through it is is that's that's all we can do now long and short of it now obviously you go out Mark and Johnson goes out and you hire our clients hire you mm -hmm. okay so do you have just one specific union at Mark and Johnson or is there a group of unions or What's the deal there? We're signatory with four trade unions. We're signatory with the carpenters. Uh, they make up about 60% 60, 60 of our workforce. So carpenters? Yeah. 
Of the 297 people that we currently, oh, this week, God. have working for us, 60% of that workforce is carpenters and millwrights. Laborers make up about 23% of our workforce, and then we are we're assigned with the, uh, the, the bricklayers, masons, and the uh, cement finishers. They make up, combined, about 17% of our workforce. Mm -hmm. And in that workforce, we have about 9% are, um, in terms of apprentices. So okay. built into that. So okay. that's, that's where we're, we focus very heavily on that. So, And one of the first terms you mentioned, we are signatories. Right. What in the devil is a signatory? Well, that's us signing a contract with those four trade groups. Okay. Yeah, so a, uh, um, a collective bargaining agreement. And that usually comes up every three years. We work out the details for the next three years and, uh, you know, work on what the pension and, and health is going to be and what the take home is going to be and so on and so forth and work rules and such. Again, um, we meet every three years, work through those. You know, uh, if we have differences, we're able to work them out. Okay. And I just learned something today. Signatories. Signatory, yeah. How about that? I'm a signatory contractor. <laughs> okay. And let's see now. Because you have unions at Market and Johnson, do you think, and I think you answered this question earlier, but I'm going to repeat myself sure. because By all means. when you're 70 years old, you have the right to repeat yourself. You have that right. <laughs> You've earned it, John. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. But uh, do you think you have a better skilled workforce because of the union? We do, and I think it's a cooperative effort with it. You know, I, I've mentioned partnership, you know, several times during our talk, and, and we mean it. Um, the apprenticeship training that, that, that they give their journeymen is, is great. Um, uh, we have, they, they all have uh, very good training centers located throughout the state that, that we take advantage of. They are very big on safety. Um, now we do a lot of cooperative training with the unions where we're working back and forth. Sometimes we use our trainers, sometimes we use their, their trainers. Uh, we do think that you get a more professional tradesmen and then the, all of them have got requirements that they go back to for as much as 16 hours to 24 hours a year for journeyman upgrade training mm -hmm. they push training and we push training and it works mm -hmm. out very well we com we're, we're completely hand in hand on that that works out extremely well for us so when you hire a carpenter you know that that carpenter most likely will not be bringing the hammer down on his thumb. That's right. <laughs> exactly. We know that he's a trained professional. And it also gives us the flexibility, if he isn't working out, we can move that person off our payroll very quickly mm -hmm. and, uh, and with, with no issues. A lot of people think that union means that someone gets a job and they are entrenched and you can't get rid of them. That's not true with the trade unions. Um, I had a superintendent that, that used to let people go before coffee because he could tell right away if they're going to work out or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a lot of flexibility there. Well, I have talked with union members, and I know that if they see somebody who isn't doing his or her job, that's an embarrassment. We definitely see that with, a, with our crews. Yeah. So yeah. They, 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 they hold each other up to, up to standards. You and, bet. Um, and a lot of times, I don't, I, I don't get involved with these things because the team are the people that are are moving these people out. The guys on the team saying, listen, this guy's not working out. He needs to go somewhere else. Okay. And he's gone. Okay. Yeah. What about the morale of your blue collar employees? Has that been affected at all by? It has. Um, you know, uh, we, we try to keep them informed. Um, I, think, I think the union leadership has been trying to do a good job. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And whenever that's out there, it's going to have a drag on uh, morale. Uh, we, we, we've been telling them, listen, your, the contracts aren't up until the end of May of 2017. So, you know, and f focus on the job, you know. And mm -hmm. so um, they've been doing a good job about that, though. And we've been very open about talking about it. And if they have questions about it, I've made myself available to people. Walk the job site so if people feel free to come up and ask me about it. And, and I can tell them. Um, but... Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of confusion with it right now. And mm -hmm. uh, I think over time, hopefully that will, you know, through education and getting the information out there, that that will take care of itself. But um, it, there will be challenges going forward. And, and we're aware of that.
and we're going to work through them. Now, my next question here, and I'm not going to ask it, I'll just read it off. Does the union provide any training for its members or employees? And you've already answered that question. Yeah, yeah. They, they certainly do. And one thing that, that, well, there's a lot of things that we like about it, but the business agents and the union leadership are hand in hand with us on that, as, as, we, as knowing that in order for the union to, to succeed, they've got to be better trained, better educated, more professional, yep. and more productive. You know, they're, they're making good wages. They're, 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 I think, fair wages. Uh, they've got good benefits, but they're earning them at the same time. Mm -hmm. And for that, you have to be more productive. The quality has to be higher and much more professional. We are definitely seeing that. You mentioned benefits. Have you seen a decline in the coverage of benefits at all? Not yet, but again, that's a cooperative effort. Um, I, I, I happen to sit on, on, on two uh, trustees. I sit on with the, on the carpenters and the masons trustee boards in order to manage them cooperatively with the unions. There's a, a team of management people. There's a team of labor people. We meet once a quarter and work through that together. Uh, Matt Faulkner, who's, who's one of my partners, he's on the, on the laborers' pension. So we stay very deeply invested with those. And I think that's worked out very well. And that was a tradition, by the way, started with Jewel Market. How about that? Yep. So do you see a decline in, in coverage at all? Or? No. Um, you know, we're always tweaking it to make sure that we're getting the maximum. We have professionals who come on in and work with us on it. Um, you know, the pension, uh, that the pension is something we have to constantly work on together so we don't end up like Illinois and New Jersey. Uh, and we're not anywhere close to that, by the way. But it's a, again, it's a cooperative effort between mm -hmm. labor and management to work through those, th those, mm -hmm. those issues. And again, you know, we agree more times than we disagree on okay. those things. So it works out pretty well. Now, are there any questions I should have asked but didn't ask? Well, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges that all employers have at this point and, uh, is going out and finding new, new people. When we went into the recession, uh, the, in the state of Wisconsin, the carpenters were putting up about 10 million work hours each year. And through the recession, that dropped down is almost uh, 7.2 million. And so that's a very, very uh, si significant cut. And now that we're back up, we're busy, we're only up about 8.4 you know, 8 million. So that means that we're still about 15% lower than what we used to be, and the benches are empty. So we're out there actively recruiting journeymen. Um, apprentices, like I said, we have 25 working for us right now, almost 10% of our workforce. We're trying to get people into the trades. And um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the challenges we have is that the Twin Cities market isn't that far away. Sure. They don't have right to work. Their wages are already higher, you know, because their cost of living is higher, so they need to be higher. So people in this area are going to have a choice going forward. And that's one of the biggest challenges that I saw the right to work when I met with the legislators. I said, you don't realize we're in a little, we're in a unique area over here because we've got the Twin Cities that can pull our workforce away. And we're working very hard to build that workforce. So if you want a job, apply to Market and Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to the Carpenters Union, Laborers Union, exactly. Well, you're hiring. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's and, and we are actively out there trying to find ways to recruit qualified journeymen and, uh, and bring up our apprentices to be our future builders. Okay. So if somebody did come to Market and Johnson, you would send them to say the labor or the carpenters union? Or? At, that, at this point, yes, but that's going to change with right to work because uh -huh. you know, they don't have to be a member of, of that union. It basically comes down to paying dues. Yep. But it all really boils down to, um, you know, we feel strongly about people paying their dues because, you know, you're, you're getting a direct benefit from that, so That's you should exactly what you I should pay for. It. Um, but you know, there's some other people who may who may disagree with that, and that's the way it is. Okay. But now I see some numbers on you. Well, I, I've shared a lot of those with you in terms of our what our percentage of carpenters, laborers, cement finishers. Um, our apprentices actually last year at one point our apprentices were as high as 44. So we're really trying to train as, as, as many people as, as possible. It used to be thought that construction guys just had to have a strong back. 
and they didn't have a didn't have to have much of a brain. Well, that's not true, and it hasn't been true for many many years. But it's definitely not true now. We need hardworking, you know, people with a work ethic who are intelligent. And we're out there, and, you know, we're talking to the schools, trying to get people interested in in uh, in, in the trades. Uh, we're working very hard with that, and uh, we're working Good. hard with the unions, as a matter of fact, Good. cooperatively Good. on that. We need people to fill in <coughs> the people who are retiring, the people who have left the industry. So, well, um, let's see. We have two minutes left. Uh, that's our program for today. My thanks to Jerry Shea. Thank Jerry, you, John. Thank you very much. Really appreciate and the opportunity. Uh, let's see. My thanks to Jerry. You threw me off balance here a little bit. Does, doesn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> it's my doesn't, nature, John. Doesn't <laughs> take much these days. <laughs> but uh, uh, my thanks to the uh, to our audience who make Labor Talks possible. And remember, we can be seen on channel 993 every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. and every uh, Saturday at 12.30 p.m. And you can also view us on YouTube now. All you have to do is Google YouTube and Labor Talks and you will see our smiling faces right there. Again, thank you very much. Chippewa Valley Community Television is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, you can contact us by calling 715-839-5067 or on the web at www.cbctv.org.